As per MIT explanation of homeopathy, concept of miasms originally described by Drive Samuel Hahnemann in his works as causative factors of chronic diseases, are scientifically redefined as chronic disease dispositions caused by off-target actions of antibodies generated in the body against alien proteins such as viral, fungal or bacterial infectious agents, parasites, vaccines, environmental allergens, venoms, deformed proteins etc. Once understood scientifically from this perspective, we need not limit the number of miasms to three only as Hahnemann explained. Any infectious disease that can generate antibodies in the organism can work as a causative factor of chronic miasms by their off-target actions. Vaccinations, which induce production of antibodies in the organism, also have to be considered as causative factors of miasms. Moreover, History of allergic reactions towards any alien proteins entering the organism, such as various allergens, bites and stings of insects and serpents, and anaphylactic reactions also have to be considered as causative factors of miasms. It was Samuel Hahnemann, who for the first time in history of medical science observed that diverse types of chronic diseases could be produced by the residual effects of infectious diseases, and he called this chronic disease dispositions as miasms. I have been trying to explain this phenomenon in scientific terms, and to find out how chronic diseases could be produced by infectious agents, even after the infections are over, which led me into the realization that infectious agents can produce lifelong chronic disease dispositions only through off-target actions of antibodies generated in the body against them. By introducing the concept of miasms, Hahnemann was actually trying to explain the role of residual effects of acute infectious diseases in causing chronic disease dispositions. His main focus was on miasm of what he called sora arising from infectious itch and leprosy, miasm of syphilis, as well as miasm of psychosis arising from HPV gonorrhea complex, which were most widespread infectious diseases around his place during his time. Hahnemann, from his clinical experiences of applying Similia Similibus Curantur, in the treatment of patients, came to the truthful conclusion that complete cure of chronic diseases is not possible with only the similimum drug selected using totality of currently existing symptoms, without considering the underlying miasms or residual effects of previous acute infectious diseases. Even though Hahnemann rightly observed the role of miasms or residual effects of infectious diseases in the causation of chronic diseases, he could not explain its molecular basis or the exact biological mechanism by which this phenomenon works, and he considered it as some noxious dynamic influences upon the immaterial vital force. This failure was due to limitations imposed by the primitive state of scientific knowledge available during his period which later led to various kinds unscientific and dynamic interpretations of miasms by his disciples and followers, which are still taught as part of theoretical system of homeopathy even today, making it a total mess. Using the advanced scientific knowledge available now, MIT for the first time in the history of homeopathy explains the exact biomolecular mechanism by which residual effects of acute infectious diseases lead to the development of chronic disease conditions, which Hahnemann called miasms. It is common knowledge that antibodies are generated in our body against infectious agents or proteins that are alien to our genetic codes. Even after infectious disease is over, these antibodies remain in our body for long periods, even for whole lifespan in certain cases. These antibodies can produce pathological inhibitions by binding to various off-target biological molecules, leading to various chronic diseases including what are currently known as autoimmune diseases. It was actually these chronic residual effects of antibodies that Hahnemann called as miasms. This revolutionary explanation of miasms relating it with infectious diseases and antibodies paves the way for a scientific understanding of a whole class of chronic diseases including so-called autoimmune disease, and developing of a whole new range of therapeutic agents and techniques to combat them. By scientifically explaining the concept of miasms as chronic disease dispositions caused by off-target actions of antibodies generated in the body against alien proteins such as infectious agents, vaccines, allergens, biological toxins etc., MIT has made a great contribution to not only homeopathy, but the medical science as whole. 
According to Hahnemann, miasm of Sora emerges in an individual only if he has a history of being infected with itch disease at least once in his life. Obviously it is the antibodies generated in the body against the particular infectious agents that work as chronic, miasms by their off-target actions up on biological molecules. Since antibodies are native globulin proteins that have undergone conformational changes by interacting with alien proteins or infectious agents, they can themselves behave as aliens in the organism and produce pathological inhibitions by binding to various off-target biological molecules having conformational similarity with functional groups of original antigens. Such molecular inhibitions caused by antibodies are the real molecular level villains playing behind various chronic diseases. Hahnemann's observation of chronic diseases, relating it with residual effects of infectious diseases, was actually a revolutionary event in medical history. Had anybody, be it Hahnemann himself, his followers or scientists, taken up the task of explaining it in scientific terms? Had anybody asked the question how an infectious disease can cause lifelong residual effects in the organism even after the infection is over, everything would have been clear. It would have been obvious that infectious agents can produce lifelong residual effects in the form of chronic diseases only through antibodies generated in the body against them. Such a realization would have helped medical as well as scientific community to view antibodies from a different perspective as causative agents of diverse types of chronic diseases over and above their role as defense molecules. While introducing the concept of miasms of infectious diseases as the causative factor of chronic diseases, Hahnemann was actually thinking far ahead of his contemporary science. Both the scientific community, as well as his own followers failed in understanding the real meaning and implications of this epoch-making revelation. Modern science has only just started to realize the role of antibodies as a major class of disease-producing molecules, which were so far considered only as defense molecules of our body. It was well known since long time how antibodies generated against Estiarptococcus throat infections produce rheumatic fever, arthritis, endocarditis and valvular deformities in the heart. Recent studies of off-target, inhibitions produced by antibodies as a major causative factor in chronic diseases so far called as autoimmune diseases shows that Hahnemann was actually thinking 200 years ahead of his time while introducing the concept of miasms. Antibodies are the molecular carriers of miasms this is what I try to make out. Antibodies generated in the body against diverse types of infectious agents and other alien proteins constitute a major class of pathogenic agents that cause diverse types of chronic diseases, including even so-called autoimmune diseases and various protonopathies. Hahnemann called this pathogenic factors as miasms, as he was not much aware of antibodies and immunology during his period. I hope the scientific community could probe deeper into the ideas put forward by MIT regarding role of antibodies formed against infectious agents, in producing diverse types of autoimmune diseases, amyloid diseases, prion diseases and various other chronic diseases. Researches on these lines may lead to the development of a whole new range of target-specific therapeutic agents to combat these diseases, synthesized by utilizing molecular and printing technology. If this idea is ever found to be of any relevance, scientific community should be thankful to Hahnemann, homeopathy and theory of miasms for enabling this great revelation. The molecular mechanism by which antibodies produce chronic diseases could be well explained by the scientific knowledge already available now. Antibodies being deformed proteins can bind to various types of native proteins, inhibit them and induce them to deform themselves, resulting in diverse types of protonopathies, amyloid diseases, autoimmune diseases and prion diseases. Understanding Hahnemann's concept of chronic diseases relating it WITH infectious miasms from MIT perspective, led us to a scientific understanding of a whole class of chronic diseases, and developing of a whole new range of therapeutic agents and techniques against such diseases. MIT explanation of miasms is the most rational, scientific, and practical one ever appeared in homeopathy, fitting well both to the modern scientific knowledge system on the one side, and Hahnemann's understanding of chronic diseases on the other.
All of us know, so-called autoimmune diseases are caused by antibodies. But, those antibodies are currently considered by scientific community to be formed not against exogenous antigens, but endogenous or host antigens. It is only very recently that the scientific community started to relate the onset of autoimmune diseases with history of infectious diseases. If we accept the explanation of miasms as antibodies formed against exogenous proteins, should we exclude autoimmune diseases from miasms, since they are considered to be formed against endogenous antigens, not exogenous proteins? Here, we have to undertake a serious study of the phenomena of autoimmunity, and autoimmune diseases. According to immunologists, autoimmune diseases arise from an overactive immune response of the body against substances and tissues normally present in the body. In other words, the body actually attacks its own cells. The immune system mistakes some part of the body as a pathogen and attacks it. This may be restricted to certain organs as in autoimmune thyroiditis, or involve a particular tissue in different places as in good pastures disease which may affect the basement membrane in both the lung and the kidney. Hundreds of chronic systemic diseases are now classified as autoimmune diseases. This group includes celiac disease, diabetes mellitus type 1, systemic lupus erythematosus SLE, Sjogren's syndrome, Churg-Strauss syndrome, Hashimoto's thyroiditis, Graves' disease, idiopathic thrombocytopenic purpura, rheumatoid arthritis RA, lupus and allergies. This group is expanding every day. Autoimmune diseases are broadly divided into systemic and organ-specific or localized autoimmune disorders, depending on the principal clinico-pathologic features of each disease. A recent observation regarding relationship of autoimmune diseases and infectious diseases is found to be very important from our miasmatic perspective of autoimmune diseases. Studies have revealed strong association of certain microbial organisms with autoimmune diseases. For example, Klebsiella pneumoniae and Coxsackie virus B have been strongly correlated with ankylosing spondylitis and diabetes mellitus type 1, respectively. This has been explained by the tendency of the infecting organism to produce superantigens that are capable of polyclonal activation of B lymphocytes, and production of large amounts of antibodies of varying specificities, some of which may be self-reactive. There is a recent proposal among immunologists that the spectrum of autoimmunity should be viewed along an immunological disease continuum, with classical autoimmune diseases at one extreme and diseases driven by the innate immune system at the other extreme. Within this scheme, the full spectrum of autoimmunity can be included. Many common human autoimmune diseases can be seen to have a substantial innate immune-mediated immunopathology using this new scheme. Autoimmune diseases are chronic pathologies considered to be triggered by the loss of immunological tolerance to self-antigens, which can cause systemic or organ-specific damage. They are also a frequent cause of morbidity and mortality. Although genetic and environmental factors were so far considered as the main reasons involved in the pathogenesis of autoimmune diseases, recent researchers have shifted the focus to infections and exposure to pathogens or opportunistic organisms as the environmental factors that may initiate or exacerbate autoimmune diseases. Many types of infections are found to influence one or more of these autoimmune diseases. Infections has been proved to cause autoimmune diseases as has been shown in animal models. Almost all autoimmune diseases have been shown to be associated with at least one infection. Autoantibodies were seen in infectious diseases in patients without autoimmune diseases, indicating that the presence of a pathogen may lead to the occurrence of autoimmune phenomena. High levels of IgM antibodies against rubella, Toxoplasma gondii, cytomegalovirus, and hepatitis C virus have been found in patients having autoimmune condition known as antiphospholipid syndrome. Moreover, cross-reactivity has been demonstrated between proteins of bacteria such as Haemophilus influenza, Neisseria gonorrhoeae, tetanus toxoid, and cytomegalovirus with anti-beta-2 glycoprotein 1-beta-2 GPI antibodies which is one of the typical antibodies of this autoimmune disease. 
Studies in animal models of SLE have shown that Epstein-Barr virus can trigger the production of auto-reactive antibodies with subsequent development of manifestations similar to those presented in the human disease. In patients, a high EBV seroprevalence has been observed as compared to healthy controls. Additionally, it has been suggested that rubella and CMV may induce the production of autoantibodies in patients with SLE. Toxoplasma gondii and Helicobacter pylori are also found to be risk factors for autoimmune conditions. It has been reported that the IgM response to some bacterial infections such as Escherichia coli, Klebsiella pneumonia, and Proteus mirabilis is associated with rheumatoid factor in rheumatoid arthritis RA. Additionally, RA has also been associated with the presence of hepatitis B virus which is higher in RA patients than in healthy controls. Similar findings have been reported for EBV in RA as well as for Sjogren's syndrome. Cytomegalovirus infection was found to trigger the clinical manifestations associated with type 1 diabetes. Associations between Coxsackie B4 virus, rubella, and type 1 diabetes have been reported. Furthermore, there are some evidence of the association between type 1 diabetes and H. pylori infection. Evidence suggests that murine CMV and EBV infections may favor the development of multiple sclerosis MS. There are different types of viruses and bacteria such as Achinetobacter and Aeruginosa associated with the induction of autoantibodies to myelin basic protein. These infections are associated with the occurrence of autoantibodies against myelin basic protein and myelin glycoprotein oligodendrocyte due to their similarity with some bacterial molecules. Antiphospholipid syndrome is an autoimmune multisystemic disease mainly characterized by recurrent fetal loss and thromboembolic phenomena together with the presence of antiphospholipid antibodies. These antibodies are associated with certain pathogens such as Haemophilus influenza, Neisseria gonorrhoeae, CMV, and the tetanus toxoid. Helminths may stay in their host for long periods of time making themselves successful pathogens. Essentially, parasites are able to change the cytokine profile from a pro-inflammatory to an anti-inflammatory profile. This change creates the perfect environmental conditions for them to survive and extend their lives within the host. Research using both human and animal models has shown that helminths can modulate the innate and the adaptive immune response. In the case of autoimmune and inflammatory diseases, the presence of parasites may induce an anti-inflammatory profile that prevents the pathological inflammatory process. Helminths infect their host mainly through the gut. Characteristically, there is an abundance of macrophages in the intestine which may be activated by the parasites many different ways. There is production of different molecules during helminth infections. Some of them are essential for the parasite life cycle or structure. These molecules include proteins, lipids, glycoproteins, and glycolipids which probably have a regulatory effect on the host immune system. Helminths may also produce molecules that mimic host cytokines due to structural similarities. Certain autoimmune diseases have been found to be linked with helminth infestations, which are obviously due to the off-target actions of antibodies generated in the body against these helminth-related proteins. There are different microorganisms that populate the gut known as intestinal microbiota. This process starts at the time of delivery and breastfeeding, and it plays an important role in the homeostasis of the human body. Indeed, there are microorganisms in the microbiota that produce enzymes and molecules which are not generated by human beings. Therefore, microbiota is important to normal metabolism because it is capable of degrading the different components in food. However, microbiota may also influence other systems that do not seem to be related to the gut such as in the case of the immune system. Moreover, it actively participates in the education of the immune system. That is why it is possible to establish a connection between microbiota and autoimmunity or inflammatory disorders. 
Antibodies are generated in the body against the proteins released by these microorganisms, which in turn play a role in producing various chronic disease conditions that are considered to be autoimmune diseases. Link between gut microflora and autoimmune diseases have been already established. The relationships between infections, antibodies and autoimmune diseases and their biological mechanisms have been outlined by various researchers. Nonetheless, most of the interactions and mechanisms that influence this relationship are still unknown. We have to study autoimmune diseases from the perspective of MIT, as a class of chronic miasmatic diseases caused by off-target actions of antibodies generated in the body against infectious agents and other alien proteins.